Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Friday, May 6. The Ministry of Health is cautioning persons to get vaccinated before they travel to countries reporting yellow fever infections. The advisory comes in the wake of a recent rise in yellow fever cases in some parts of Africa and continued risk in some South and Central American countries. Yellow fever is an acute illness caused by the yellow fever virus, which is found in the tropics of South America and Africa. The virus is transmitted by the bite of an infected Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same vector that transmits the chikungunya, dengue and Zika viruses. Yellow fever symptoms may be mild and go unnoticed or may be severe and affect many organ systems. Vaccines for the disease are available and administered at the Comprehensive Health Center in Kingston as well as the Montego Bay Type 5 Health Center in St. James on a schedule. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Winston Delahaye says vaccination should be done at least 10 days prior to travel, adding that the ministry has systems in place to monitor travelers for yellow fever. Government has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, to review Jamaica's cultural policy. Culture Minister Olivia Grange, who signed on behalf of the government, says the goal is to increase revenues through greater international exposure of Jamaican culture. We intend to create new platforms of engagement to expand the global reach of our Jamaican culture and entertainment and generate and increase national revenue streams through partnership with global enterprises who have been engaged in leveraging our Jamaican cultural goods and services all over the world. She says that in order to do this, her ministry will become more involved with other ministries to highlight the importance of culture across different sectors of the economy. Jamaica is the first country in the region to have a cultural policy and the revised policy should be ready by 2017. The country's tourism product has been diversified with the introduction of timeshare legislation. The Timeshare Vacations Act officially took effect on May 1, providing unique opportunities for developers and buyers. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett made the announcement at the recent Jamaica Product Exchange trade show. Timeshare allows persons to jointly own a vacation property, such as a villa or resort condominium, and each owner is allowed to use the property for a fixed period of time in any given year. We will then be open for business to bring new demographics and to drive new arrivals into destination Jamaica. The cannabis plant is to be used to boost Jamaica's medical tourism industry. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says cannabis for medicinal purposes is a lucrative industry, with research proving the plant to be effective in the fight of chronic illnesses. He was speaking at a recent international diabetes conference. The introduction of cannabis can, if proven effective, diversify options for treatment for diabetics. In the same way, the introduction of cannabis into treatment for diabetes among other illnesses will also play a role in diversifying the product that we market to the tourists. The Montego Bay Parish Council this week recognized the contribution of 10 sons of the city by renaming several streets in their honor. Councillor for the Montego Bay Northeastern Division, Senator Charles Sinclair, praised the honorees for their contribution to the development of Montego Bay. Speaking on behalf of local government minister Desmond McKenzie, he took the opportunity to encourage citizens to become more involved in their community. Communities with proactive organizations in which our hardworking, law-abiding citizens are deeply involved are the ones that are much less vulnerable to organized crime, more effective in withstanding natural disasters and more successful in developing meaningful projects. And finally, the government has pumped $35 million into the Jamaica International Invitational Meet, which takes place this Saturday, May 6. The funds have been donated by the Sport Development Foundation. Sport Minister Olivia Grange made the announcement on Thursday while at a press briefing regarding this year's meet. She said the donation showed government's commitment to the development and promotion of sport. Having made its debut in 2004, the Jamaica International Invitational is now a well-established brand globally. Now with the Rio Olympics on the horizon, this weekend is another opportunity to showcase Brand Jamaica to the world in all, fac in all facets imaginable and to just whet your appetite for what is to come. 
This weekend, we'll see many of the world's premier athletes in action, including our very own Olympic and world champion, Shelly and Fraser Price. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Kerry Ann Smith. Thanks for watching.